Bob, it's a real treat to be with you and a real treat to begin this, what I hope will become a series of conversations about teaching and coaching the game of golf. For the better part of 31 years, you've been a fixture at the Sequan Resort at Singing Hills and the Director of Instruction since 1991. Uh, our relationship spans four decades mm. and it's just a treat to have you here. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. it, Joe. You know, some of the things that you and I have talked about over the years and some of the things that I'm always interested in is your evolution as a teacher. And talk briefly about the great influences, or not briefly, just talk mm. about the great influences that came your way early on and shaped the way you teach the game. Wow. Man, mom and dad, yeah. uh, Fred and Ruth, and the Long Beach Muni courses would have never seen a golf course if it had been $100 green fees, who weren't country clubbers. Uh, Rudy Duran at Hartwell Park, my first real teacher, and Tom Schottner at Santa Ana Country Club and Friendly Hills. Uh, Tom, because he introduced me to drilling, you know, the quantity of practice. You know, I wore the grooves off my Hogan Apex irons, thanks to Tom Schottner. Um, 1973 LA Open, I'd never been to a country club, I'd never seen a caddy, and I'd never seen a tour from there. Mm -hmm. So that was the day I decided to turn pro. So I'd known since I was 12 years old. Tag Merritt that Rancho Santa Fe Golf Club, and the beginnings of the VHS recording of Golf Swings with Carl Welty. I was sitting on the ground floor of that a little bit. I'd never seen my swing on video. Mm -hmm playing scratch golf for six or seven years before I ever saw it on video. And, and that must have been a revelation, you know, the, the exponential growth in, in the use of technology to teach the game. Um, we were talking about uh, Peter Costas, and we were talking about some of the tools that were available to teachers nowadays. Has it become a little much, or is it just the right amount, or in some cases are we still needing more stuff? Good question. Tag, speaking of Mr. Merritt, he basically spent the entire lesson pointing out what you're doing right. So he asked me about influences, and I, I continue in that tradition today. I try to use video to point out when the student's doing something right. And I think a little bit of gobbledygook uh, gets in there when it's just made too complicated and the student ends up burdened by uh, lots of information. The information while overwhelming for many, others thrive on it. Mm -hmm. and, and so you bring together these different schools of thought in how to coach and teach. And, and, and I'm never sure of the terminology. You and I talk about right. coaching versus teaching. Uh, talk, talk a little bit about that. Well, I think of teaching as more telling mm -hmm. and showing. Mm -hmm. So I might get out a book or I might just flat tell the person, your stance is too wide for this little half shot. Coaching would be more asking. I might ask them to hit a six iron 70 yards and not, not trying to teach them anything, but they would hopefully learn something through the experience on their own. So that's kind of the distinction that I make there. Talk, talk about the insecurities and the failures that you've had as a teacher and how they've shaped uh, the fine teacher you are today. Well, you know, look at a mirror. Sheesh. I think that the biggest mistake is not paying attention. The tardiness is right up there with not paying attention, but going through the lesson, it's all about the student and caring and personalization. And if you let your mind wander and you stop caring and you're sort of blowing smoke at some point, um, you'll find that reprehensible. I try not to let it happen, right? I feel like I'm pretty good at it, but I catch myself. Do you, do you have a great feeling of certainty when you conduct the golf lesson? Can you about your skill and what you're able to convey? More than ever. You know, can't wait to get there in the morning, oh, so nice. love it. Can't wait to get there in the we, morning. You know, we, we, we talk often about what's the greatest gift you might leave a student with, and, and sometimes we say that we're going to give a student a swing of his or her own. Um, but what is it for you that you want the takeaway to be for 
those mm -hmm. things that you come to you? Yeah, that's a good question. I think that uh, it's very important for them to get their wish. So not just maybe during that one lesson, I always ask if there's something special you would like to have happen today mm -hmm. or a question like that so that I know what their wish is and their long-term goals. If they've got a scoring goal that's going to take weeks or months or perhaps years, that that's always kept in mind. So that's the gift, really, is, is they get their wish. Another one is I'd like to make a little dent in the bad rap that golf lessons sort of have. You talk to people about their golf lesson experience and they roll their eyes and shake their head. and you know, They can't remember the teacher's name because it was so insignificant and maybe goggling and you know, speaking of gobbledygook. So I'd like to make a little dent in that so that, that person leaves having had an, ex an exceptional experience. So, wow, that was fun. That was, that was cool. I like to unburden so the person leaves the lesson with less to worry about, ooh, ooh, ooh. not more. If, if you pin me up against the wall and said, do you have a method or do you have a, a philosophy that would be sort of my thing, would be to have the student leave the lesson with less to worry about more okay. often than not. Very good. Nice. Thanks. And, and you're, you're playing, uh, you're a noted player, a very successful player on a lot of different levels for a lot of years. How does that That's shape? pretty generous. Well, it, it's pretty true. How has playing the game shaped teaching the game for you? What, what, what influences mm. from your own golf game have you taken to the lesson? Well, I mentioned Mr. Schottner and, and drilling. You know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of doing and repetition. And you know, let's drill it in so we don't have to worry about it instead of stuff to remember. Uh, but I think it's probably more the other way around. My teaching has probably influenced my playing because I feel an obligation to practice what I preach in terms of course management, for example. I don't get driver off of our fives. I play them in three shots and try to make humble decisions on the golf course like I ask my students to make and trust in their course management the short game. So it's, it's more the other way around. I'm a better player because of practicing what I preach and the concepts of you know swing the club and let the ball get in the way, et cetera. Well, I'm going to say exceptional stuff, and I appreciate more than you know you're taking the time to be a part of what I hope becomes a series of these conversations, and uh, you're my guinea pig, and you're a gift to the PGA of America, you're a gift to the section, um, and I remain and always will be a big fan. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you.